All right. Um, well, welcome everybody. Glad that everybody can now uh, now hear me. Um, so thank you for thank you for joining um, our public safety fleet operations webinar here today. Um, we'll get into uh, we'll jump into introductions right away here. <clears throat> All right. Um, so. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Amanda Doyle. I am the Senior C Customer Success Manager here at NBI, also team lead, so managing some of our customer success managers. I've been with NBI for just under seven years um, and have um, some experience working with um, fleet like, fleets like yours, so um, both ambulance fleets, police fleets, municipalities, cities, all of that stuff. So happy to, to be here today and share some insight um, with our fellow speakers. So I'll let um, both Wayne and Francois introduce themselves here now. So handing it over to Wayne. Hi, my name is Wayne Melendi, and I'm the operations manager for uh, Fewer's group of ambulance services in Newfoundland. Uh, we're the largest private operator uh, of ambulances uh, in Newfoundland. Uh, we've run a fleet of approximately up to uh, 70 trucks around the province and uh, over uh, a vast area. Uh, we've been on with uh, Northern BI for, I don't know, I'm going to say for this past 10, 15 years. I'm not quite sure, actually. And uh, I'm certainly very interested in sharing what knowledge uh, that I have uh, in uh, in dealing with the GeoTab and Northern BI team over the last while. Excellent, thank you, Wayne. Um, and over to Francois. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Francois Levac. I'm the Deputy Chief of Police for the Edmonton Police Force. And just to give you a glimpse, Edmonton is located right on the border of Ke province of Quebec and right on the border of Maine. So they, it's the port of entry. So if you guys are coming through New Brunswick, you know, of course, you're more than welcome to stop by. All our fellow officers, fellow first responders, we're always a pleasure and to meet you in person. And yeah, I'm also a PSAP, uh, 901 PSAP manager. So I got two roles here and I'll explain how we have uh, implemented uh, GeoTab for both of the uh, areas. Basically, we use it for our 911 and we use it for uh, on the police fleet. All right, perfect. Thanks, Francois. We're going to jump right into things here. All right, so in terms of our agenda and housekeeping, just a few items that we would like to discuss today. So um, in perspective of the agenda, we'll go through, you know, who is Northern BI, who is GeoTab, data security, why telematics for public safety fleets, um, some measuring of KPIs, so how how this helps in terms of safety, productivity, sustainability, compliance, expandability, and optimization, um, change management, and how NBI can help. Um, we'll go through some panel questions with both Wayne and Francois, and then we'll open things to Q&A for the rest of the team. So um, a few little housekeeping items before we jump into it. So if we can um, ask all of our questions within the Zoom Q&A, that would be great. We'll get to those um, before the end of the presentation. Um, as well as to watch out for polls. So we will be asking a few questions throughout. So make sure to watch for those. Um, attendees will be entered into a little draw for a Yeti. So stay tuned for that. Um, once the webinar ends, you'll receive um, a little survey. So that will be automatically prompted. Um, and of course, if there are any questions, by all means, please contact us through our website, um, which is listed here. Um, we also have some, some information that we'll share near the end in terms of how to reach us. Um, but otherwise, let's jump into things here. All right. Um, so for those of you who don't know GeoTab, GeoTab is a telematic software and product manufacturer and ranked number one in telematic software and product manufacturer worldwide. Um, they have over 4 million connected vehicles, 75 billion data points processed daily, and they are based in Oakville, Ontario. However, they do service, service worldwide. Um, in Northern Business Intelligence is a, a GeoTab reseller. We were established in 2005. We have over 800 clients. We offer bilingual support, um, both within our customer success team, our customer support team, some of our business development managers as well. 
and we are most recently certified within the public sector through GeoTab. Um, and we do offer a very hands-on approach to our implementation and to our support. So actively participating in, in those meetings, getting into the weeds with our clients from start to finish. Um, we also offer professional services and customization. So if the out-of-the-box tool doesn't work, we're happy to discuss other avenues for you to get there. Um, and we are based in Halifax, but also servicing primarily within Canada and the U.S. All right, we have listed some of our public sector clients here. So we have um, Regina Police, City of Vancouver, Fewers, we have on the call today, Ottawa, Edmondson Police, and St. John's. Um, so just to, name, just to name a few, these ones here we've got listed. We also have a few success stories with some of these, um, these companies here on our website. All right, maybe before we dive into um, all, all the details of our webinar today, um, we felt as though this would be the perfect opportunity to sort of speak to our upcoming NBI Public Sector Summit. So we are hosting our first um, client-facing event here in Halifax, Nova Scotia between June 12th and 14th. And we are inviting companies like yourselves um, within the public sector um, of things. So who should attend? this type of um, summit would be public works fleets, public transport fleets, public safety fleets, utility, government, um, any other, any other maybe energy services that sort of fit into this, this aspect would be great. Um, our, our staff will be present. We have Geotab and ROSCA representatives who are joining us and we're hoping to use this as a point of connection. So for, you know, you guys joining, you guys joining us, being able to share some of your experiences with Geotab um, would be great for other companies learning how to use these things too. So um yeah, so if you want to register, you can scan the QR code at the top. We'll also share some information. We'll send this presentation out. But any of you who are not currently an existing NBI client and who do sort of, if you fit the bill for the for the prospects, then um, you can also scan to register and, and sign up with us there. So looking forward to seeing you guys in person and um, yeah. All right, let's kick things off here with our first poll. Um, so you should see a prompt. Um, so the question being, does your public safety fleet currently use a telematics system? Just about 30 seconds. All right, so we'll just give everybody 30 seconds on this one. You're not allowing me to tick something. Pick one off. Share results. Sounds good. So uh, you won't be able to see that. Do you want me to share them? Yeah, you can share them. All right. It's gone. Okay. Um, we'll share the results with everybody after, but maybe in summary, um, would be, yes, that we use GeoTab so we can review those a little bit more closely later. But for the most part, everybody on the call here today uses some facet of GeoTab. So that's great. All right, so we're going to jump into some of the reasons maybe, you know, why we use telematics. So and why, you know, GeoTab is known for for this piece. So in terms of security first, so um, Geotab does, um, <clears throat> does focus strictly on security. Um, so in terms of first telematics company, they've received the FIPS um, validated. So we're gonna see a lot of, <clears throat> of different certifications here. Um, one in particular that I wanted to, to advise on would be the two-factor authentication. So I'm not sure if some of you are familiar or if you have implemented this already within your fleet, um, but we Geotab does offer a single sign-on via SAML, which is a way to more securely approach your data and, and access to my Geotab. Um, one of the other things that I did want to pinpoint, which you see a little diagram at the top right of the slide here. Um, so 
um, ambulances, for instance, might be referred to as computers on wheels, where there are a lot of different facets that could, you know, potentially cause some hacking. So Geotab does back with a lot of certifications around cybersecurity to be able to prevent that access and to, to offer a more safe environment for both the officer driving as well as your data. So this is just a bit on security. <clears throat> All right. What you see on the screen here are Geotab's six pillars for public safety. So here we're gonna dive into some of the reasons why telematics. All right. First, first and foremost, safety. So what you see on the screen here are is a bit of a screenshot of your dashboard. So Geotab offers for one, one particular one that we strongly recommend is the driver behavior. So um, not always is the, the fleets that are promoting safety, they don't always have the safest drivers. Um, so this Geotab does offer the ability to track speeding, harsh driving, um, seatbelt usage, custom reporting on some of those things. So specifically maybe the driver safety scorecard, something to sort of pinpoint those risky drivers and coach those behaviors. <clears throat> one of the quotes that we've listed here, so from Regina Police, um, one of our clients, mine specifically, um, they have in, in one specific scenario, they had to cause a collision to stop a pursuit. And during that, they were able to use the collision alert within Geotab, which presented to be 100% correct, um, which, was, which was excellent feedback for us to see, but also great information for them to help with that collision reconstruction. In terms of productivity, so with Geotab, you're able to dispatch nearest vehicles by being able to see the vehicles on the map, able to advise them on specific incidents up and coming. In terms of monitoring patrol zones, real-time location tracking, ability to identify most and least used vehicles. So what you can see at the top right, one of the utilization reports that we do offer. Um, area activity is also something that is highly used within the public sector. So for instance, if there is an incident, so if we take, for example, there's a there's a fire that happened yesterday and we want to see, you know, when our vehicles or when the fleet arrived, how long they were there, we can create a geofence and reprocess our data to be able to see when those vehicles arrived and for how long and really scope out the incident a little bit more. So maybe using geofencing when area activity does not fit the bill. Um, in terms of custom reports, ability to, you know, again, um, report on that productivity, um, theft in terms of asset recovery. So with the Geotab within your vehicle, you're able to see where it was if your vehicle was stolen. Um, and then, of course, the ability to track non-powered equipment that you might use, which can also be seen within the database. In terms of compliance, so circle checks, um, the ability to conduct those electronically. So with the use of Geotab Drive, you're able to do those and then report on them within my Geotab. Assistance with processing insurance claims, getting that information a little bit faster, um, always helping with furthering investigation. So like that collision reconstruction, being able to get into some of the weeds of those details. Of course, system security, personal mode. So if there are undercover vehicles that we want them to sort of drop from the map, but we still want to get information from them, um, ability to do that. And then of course, what is most important is that you own your own data. Expandability. So I just want to make sure that just a quick time check mm -hmm. um, that we still have enough time for Francois and Wayne. Um, so in terms of expandability, and I think Francois, you might be able to speak to some of these things um, within your presentation, but um, in terms of we've got software integrations, driver ID, so the swipe cards in and out to, to determine who is driving the vehicle, ability to connect into lights and siren activity, camera solution also being one of them, um, vehicle temperature for your canine friends, which is always good, gun rack and equipment sensors. So I believe this is something Francois that you'll be able to, to speak to later on. Um, doors open closed and the ability to, you know, the automated vehicle access. So this is just to name, name a few. A lot of our clients are leveraging some of these, these tools within their fleet. All right. 
sustainability. Um, I know I know a lot of my clients, this is a um, hot topic. Everybody is looking at how they can green their fleet. So Geotab is con continuously expanding within sustainability. You'll notice that within the database and feature preview. Um, but to name a few, so the increased fuel e efficiency, decreasing of idling, the ability to track CO2 emissions. I think, again, Francois shares some of that in his presentation. And we also have the free um, EV suitability assessment available to the Geotab users to be able to determine lifetime cost <clears throat> and potential switch to EV vehicles. Um, on that topic, so Geotab does work with over 300 plus EV models, always adding to that list. So we see a lot of different clients approaching us with vehicles that may not be tracked that we've now made possible. So that's always good things. Um, and then, of course, through analytics, we're able to measure data against similar fleets. So being able to take your, your data and see that within the analytics tab that they're always changing. And then, of course, the green fleet dashboard. So if you're not using that, maybe something to help with the sustainability and greening your fleet. Optimization. Um, so <clears throat> another way why to choose um, telematics would be the ability to detect engine issues and faults, minimize the wear and tear of your vehicles, ability to schedule maintenance alerts, monitor engine hours and mileage, identify some of the costliest vehicles. Um, but maybe one thing to point out is Geotab might not have been built just for maintenance. So it's always good to know that you have the ability to integrate with you know, maintenance software such as Fleetio. I do know that it's it's something that some of our clients utilize. Um, so maybe something to, to look into. <clears throat> and lastly here, we've got change management. So if if there's anything that NBI does does great would be the, the change management. So we do offer a dedicated customer success manager to each of our clients to help um, go through the full implementation from start to finish and then just stick with you until, until the end as well. Um, we offer customized training for administrators, drivers, or anybody within your, your organization. Um, project management, of course, to ensure a successful adoption. So this would be driven by your customer success manager. Um, we also offer, as mentioned previously, would be professional services. So software integrations, customized reporting. So if ever there is that need that is sort of out of the box, we're here to help support those types of initiatives. And then, of course, to offer support and troubleshooting. So our dedicated support team, uh, bilingual support team is, is there and available to assist um, whenever those incidents come up. And uh, yeah, I mean... Yes, you're in good hands with us and your your dedicated your dedicated team. All right. Um. So now we're going to get into some panel questions. Um. So we'll ask the question, and and Francois, we'll start with you if that's okay. Um. So the first question here is, what has been the most valuable aspect of implementing telematics in your fleet? So we'll have Francois answer, and then we'll go to Wayne. Yes, thank you, Amanda. Well, there's a, I forgot first to mention that we're a small department. We had seven, uh, only seven uh, mark cars, and but we intend to uh, install our GP, all GPS system on all our even unmarked cars. So uh, because we want to, uh, uh, every we want to have more accountability and that all uh, all access to the data for all our fleet. But we wanted to start with the mark. Uh, cars first. So to answer your question, I have a few uh, bullet points. Uh, there's a lot. Uh, it brings a lot to our, uh, our organization. Basically, uh, first, the first thing that comes in my mind, of course, and and I'm, I'm pretty sure that the uh, if there's other uh, police uh, managers in here is the officer safety. Uh, and how does it does that? It's an ends real time uh, location tracking, uh, basically, uh, <laughs> We have implemented um, uh, Geotab. Basically, our dispatchers, our 911 center, has access to uh, uh, live screens are where are exactly our officers. And uh, what we like about it is that there's uh, many views. You can set it as you want. You and as soon as you click, you get a Google Street view exactly where your officer is doing is interacting. So uh, the officer safety issue for, for, for us is, the, of course, is the primary aspect. And um, uh, also it allows us for a quickest response. 
uh, or incident uh, by directing the nearest uh, available unit, uh, potentially saving lives and increasing the effectiveness of uh, of, of our activities because we we were able to see who is the closest uh, depending on the emergency. Uh, also, it can also it helped us to uh, risk to significantly reducing the risk of accident. How does it does, does that is just we our officers are able to access their own data. So uh, basically it's each platoon officer uh, has access to their officers. So they can't see uh, how they're doing, their scorecard and and of course uh, to evaluate themselves and see if they can improve their driving skills. But of course it's all situation by situation. You know, we have to drive uh, for emergencies. So of course, uh, data is, is evaluated one at a time, but it's the data is available to them, but not accessible to everyone. So if anybody knows, have, wants to have more information on this, I'll, I'll be more than uh, happy to explain how we did it, but it's just the data, the data is open. So it's not like it's only management that is uh, monitoring uh, the data. So we want them to see and, and uh, not hide anything from them and to be accountable uh, on what they're doing. Uh, also for the fuel consumption and emission reduction, uh, the optimization, you talked about it, Amanda. Uh, basically we do have, and I'll show it later on, we, uh, we asked for a customized uh, uh, dashboard that we can see the CO2 emissions. And, and when we get the results, it's, it's a monthly uh, customized report on, and it's all received on Excel. And what we do is that uh, we send it to our environmental environmental department and they evaluate uh, if they can be if there can be any improvement because environment is important now it's a it's a big issue and we we want to respect that so uh, we, it's going pretty well with that and we just uh, switched to a full electrical uh, cruise uh, police cruiser so we will have to install and see what kind of implementation we can add with GeoTab to have access to more data when it comes to fully electric because. Uh, we were only using by now uh, hybrid uh, SUVs. Uh, and also uh, it helped us as manager uh, um, uh, for our personal needs uh, to make data-driven uh, decision-making uh, because basically uh, if we have certain type of uh, criminal activities or uh, uh, the population, the citizens want uh, uh, more patrol on a certain neighborhood, uh, basically, there's a lot of options you can add with GeoTab that helps to see or just to focus on, on that area specific, specifically. And even for the officer to evaluate, okay, well, we only have been there like five we, five times this week. Maybe we can increase and go uh, a few more times and make more patrol. And thing is that when people are calling, well, I didn't see any of your officers. Well, we do have the data saying, well, they, they went during the night. You were... People were sleeping or they didn't see the police cruiser, but we actually went there and we did patrol their area and it, it proves that we're offering the service. Do you want me to talk about the integration right now, Amanda, or? Uh... Um, yeah, did you did you have that listed on your slides a bit later? Because otherwise we we can certainly get uh, into not, that. Not now. the integra integration, so I'll, I'll talk to it. I'll talk about sure. it right now. Uh, yeah, we integrated here. We we went with the auxiliary system, and I will I I would highly suggest everyone to go with the auxiliary system. It gives you more data. Basically, uh, what it, what we did with it is that we have three auxiliaries in a patrol vehicle. And we have one on, on the carbine, basically on the gun lock. And we have one on the siren and one for uh, the emergency lights. This helps to know exactly when each systems have been activated. And let me tell you, I've, I've tested it and it's 99.9% .9 accurate. So, so you know uh, at what time uh, a gun lock was activated. Uh, the officer knows that at the beginning of their shift, they have to check their carbine and their equipment. So this helps. And also, uh, if there's a certain situation uh, and you have to evaluate, evaluate after, well, you have access to this data. And if also your officers or our officers are involved in an accident, and hopefully this is not going to happen, mm -hmm. but you know exactly at which uh, moment uh, the, the siren was activated, the flashers were activated. And uh, it helps for accountability for us and for the officer. 
Awesome. Perfect. Thanks for expanding on that, Paswa. Um, and, and I guess we'll go through the same question here for yourself, Wayne. So if you could also contribute an answer, what has been the most valuable aspect of implementing telematics in, in your fleet? Yeah, I'm going to certainly speak to that. And a lot of it is going to be echoing uh, what Francois has already indicated, uh, realizing he's, uh, he's police and we're uh, EMS ambulance. Uh, first of all, one of the first things I noticed from the early onset is that, you know, Geotab was easy to install. Uh, it connects to the diagnostic port in the, in the truck. It's uh, very easy to, to put it there and it's very easy to remove. And especially with us, with a rollover of, uh, of, of our fleet, uh, uh, easy removal, easy installed as an asset. Uh, for us, right from the onset is, is, before we had this uh, system, we couldn't tell where our fleet was at all times. When we got the geotabs installed, instantly we knew in our dispatch center, uh, there is a big screen TV in our dispatch center. There's three dispatchers there and at any given time they can look up, they'll see the map of Newfoundland and it'll show where all of our trucks are to around the province. Uh, and also what it done actually is that it held people, you know, the employees, the paramedics on the front line to be, you know, more accountable. It uh, it decreased the response times, uh, you know, because we could see in real time that, you know, when we had boots on the ground and we had vehicles moving, which is really, really important to us. It monitored uh, driving habits, whether it was good or bad. As we know, and or I know specifically, that everybody's driving habits are so much different. Uh, we did uh, early in the game. We put a, uh, a speed cap. We got a speed policy that every paramedic within our group, and there's 250 paramedics, uh, they have to sign off and they understand that they cannot exceed, not that they cannot exceed, but the company recommends that you do not exceed the speed limit by 20% 20 per, 20 of the spoke limit. If you do exceed that, I heard Francois allude to it the other day, if they do jump, say, up to 150, 160 K an hour, they better have a good reason to explain why they're doing it. Uh, so again, that keeps everybody accountable. Early in the game, we noticed that our fuel economy had, uh, uh, had improved significantly, significantly, uh, minimum of 20% savings. And the company shareholders that I worked for early in the game, you know what I mean, right? Recognize that we were saving more on fuel consumption than what this system was causing us. And look at the benefits that we were getting from the system. I can touch on the monthly reports, uh, you know, in, 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 the, uh, in our industry, the, the best. I mean, we get a list of all of our trucks and, and, and the report shows well, what units are getting the best fuel economy or what's getting the worst. Uh, they can report on about mileage. We're living in a big province, strategically placing ambulances. You know what I mean? We got ambulances that are only probably putting on 1,000 kilometers a month. We got others are putting around 10,000 kilometers a month. So it's good for good fleet usability. I call it fleet usability. Um, idling time, reports idling times. Another biggie that the paramedics did not like is that early in the game, we identified how much time they were spending at the coffee and donut shop. We created zones. We put these zones around. We even put zones around Walmart, especially in some of the higher call volume area and call volume area and in the higher traffic areas. And we weren't doing this. Like we don't spend our day looking at this geotab. What I like about geotab is that when I'm when I hear my computer is flipping because alerts are coming in from geotab that hey, somebody out there has broken a rule. And that's what we focus on. I don't look at this coffee shop thing. The only time that I will look at something like that or somebody in my office would is if there's a flag. If there's a reason why there was a delay, why a truck didn't get moving. Uh, the other thing, I got quite a few of these there and I'm like Francois, I can go on and on and on. Uh, when there was incidents uh, uh, and accidents, you know, we got the information in real time. I looked at one a while ago where one of our trucks uh, came in on with a moose. There were three moose in the highway and they hit one and the moose fell right in the driver's lap. Luckily, it was a very, very small moose. 
but the investigation showed the exact speed when they hit that moose. How far they traveled after they hit moose, hit the moose. They even showed it down to the one hundredth of a second. That you know when when they uh, the actual time when they hit the moose, it was down to like one minute and so many seconds or so many milliseconds. So and we could take our cursor and I tracked that animals what they were driving five miles prior to the incident come all the way along watching their speed. And in this particular case, they were, they were overdriving their headlights. Newfoundland is full of moose. I'm sure you've heard about the Newfoundland moose, something that we deal with here every day. And that's for, and we tell them to keep the speed down because it's, it's about their safety, the safety of our drivers, our paramedics, the patients we carry, the family members we carry, the people on our highways and byways. This is what it's all about. If we can, you know what I mean, bring that down, the risk down, uh, we've done our job. Um, what else we touched on? Um, again, we get a lot of complaints, maybe like the police force do, complaint for the public. And I think Francois already touched on it. If you only knew how many complaints that comes into our office, you know, we live 10 minutes from your shop and it took a half an hour for the ambulance to get there. We can go on our system. We can tell when the engine started at what the time we were on your doorstep. And we all know in an emergency, and Francois will know, you know, one minute is like 15 and everything gets elongated, you know what I mean, right? But we can go and get the real time uh, information. And now I think that I've heard you say, Amanda, that all this information is encrypted. Yes which is important. That is a very, very important feature because I came into that. I came into that when the police came and got our uh, a number of years ago uh, where there was an incident and when the caller called into our dispatch center. So our recorder and the police came and got it, got the information we provided to the police so they could present it in court. And there was, it's, I don't know if it really worked because there's some information or it came up that it wasn't encrypted. So because it wasn't encrypted, it couldn't be used in court. But that was that's not a geotab issue. That's an issue with our telecorder. I do like the fact that uh, I get the email alerts. These email alerts is whatever we want, whether it's engine, abu engine abuse, arse breaking. Uh, you know, I used to get impossible accidents. These 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 geotabs are they are are that sensitive. We got our technicians. We got a big shop. Those all of our repairs. We're located centrally in Newfoundland, centrally in Newfoundland, uh, by population. And the technicians up in the shop, uh, you know, when they were servicing the truck from time to time, they would have to disconnect the geotab. So one of the technicians up there knew how sensitive the geotab was. So he was playing a gag on me one day. He knew I was in my office. He was up to the shop working in the truck and he had the geotab still plugged in, let go at an harness. And what do you think he was doing with it? He was shaking it like that. And my email was going crazy. So it was that sensitive. Now, when it's properly secure, that's why if you have a possible accident, the vehicle gets a joke, it sends an alert to, to, to our office. So and that's just one of the things you can get on. Sometimes you can have a technician that's a bit of a funny guy can play a gag on you. I did have that happen once. Um, um perfect. Just in terms of just in terms of time check here, uh, maybe we jump into um the next question. Um appreciate all those stories, Wayne. It's nice to nice to nice to hear for sure. Um all right. So the next question that we have for the both of you um, would be, um, so many public safety fleets aren't using telematics to manage their operations. In your experience as a first responder, what tools, information are these fleets missing out on? Um, so we'll we'll go back to Francois to kick it off and, and let Wayne follow up. Thank you, Amanda. Well, definitely they're, they're, they're missing uh, the lack of ab ability to dispatch the closest unit to an incident and potentially delaying response time because by knowing live where uh, officers are to attend scenes and intervene. Uh, also, uh, they're missing critical data on the driver behavior, uh, which is key preventing accident uh, for the officer to assessing or even evaluating themselves and um, also uh, improve uh, transparency and accountability to the public. Uh, 
Also, um, the fleet may face more frequent and severe mechanical failures uh, because everything you get from Geotab, uh, the sensors are basically the same when a mechanical technician is connecting your vehicle. So us, what we did is that our public works uh, department where the mechan uh, mechanical technicians are, have access to our Geotab, but only to the fleet maintenance uh, data, nothing else. They don't know where our police fleet are at. They don't have any data on uh, on any other data. Basically, all they they do is that once a week they go on our on our geotab and they look. Is there any mechanical uh, me, me, mechanical sorry failure with our fleet? Uh, is it minor minor things? And they will give us a call. Say, well, could you bring that to the garage so we can look at it? So it's uh, in a preventive way. Uh, we we love that. Basically, we just get a call and uh, our fleet is uh, is always good to go. Um, operational cost saving. Uh, you if you have any idling problem, because we all know we're all idling. Uh, idling, I think, is part of emergency services. And uh, yeah, they're gonna put up report there. As you can see, I've I've just this is a customized report that uh, I've asked uh, GeoTab to. Uh, uh, to to give us basically for a bigger fleet like you could see which uh, vehicle are the most utilized and least utilized as you can see here uh, it's basically what you see that we have 21002 is not used uh, a lot it's a that's a dodge charger so you can evaluate fun stuff i call it fun because it's always data is always give you a good perspective perspective of things and you can ask also for a customized report. Like we wanted to report on, you don't see the names, of course, uh, they blur out, blurred out, but uh, per officer, uh, what are the distance report? Uh, have they patrolled? Like, uh, or were just stagnant? Or did they patrol uh, our, 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 our jurisdiction? So basically the number you see there is 500, one of the officers uh, patrol 500 kilometers. Uh, so uh, on, on the territory. Always, it always depends, of course, of, of the amount of work they have. You know, this is just data, so we have to see the big picture here. Uh, uh, we also have one uh, graphic for the time spent outside uh, the police station. Is there too much? There's a lot of paperwork in policing and probably in the permitting world. It is part of the game, but how is, how is it affecting uh, our presence uh, uh, on the territory, on our jurisdiction? So we can see this time that is spent at the office per officer. So everything is it can be customized with Geotab. That's that's what's fun. You just ask them, and basically, uh, for me, I ask for something, and basically the next day I get a customized report on an Excel sheet, and we just evaluate. And uh, it's always always nice to have that uh, quick service. Or, or time spent in donut shops, perhaps, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> cops do like donuts, don't they? So I'm and I include myself. But yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, it's so mostly we we tend to uh, stay well. Yeah, we're entitled to a break, but not too not too long. And also uh, for uh, an environmental purposes, uh, yeah, the CO two emission is a big thing. Environment, you know, we have to do our part for the environment, and I think where we start we started doing that. So we have the CO two emission. This is a new report, so I haven't played with it a lot, but basically. Uh, all kinds of numbers in there, and we send it to the special specialist people at our environmental depart department at the city hall, and they're going to look at it. And if we can't improve uh, in some aspect, we will uh, we will do so. So, uh, man, this is going to help a lot for the environmental aspect. And uh, I was about to say the two big things, the two big terms uh, that I want to say here especially for a police department, it's the same for every uh, emergency services, is account accountability and transparency. It's really, really important. And the data can provide that because we had complaints on our officer uh, spent too much time at some place and uh, they, they, they did the driving behavior that wasn't, and basically most of the time, 99% of the time, they, they did what they did their job, did their job right. Because, and we have access to the data to prove it. And you can just, and you look at it and the officers know, they know what data we have access to. We're not hiding anything from them. And we did it in a way that we wanted to communicate. We, we don't want the officer feels that they're being overwatched or, or micromanaged, but
but they have to understand that as a, as the police manager right, and we have to be accountable and it, it helped a lot and everything we communicated get that communicated that the best way we could and we had a discussion about it and we had we had no problems whatsoever it's helping us uh, every day and that's a tool that can be on our, your cell phone and it's a sensitive tool so we've put things in place that uh, we can audit that uh, only certain specific people have access to the data because we're we have you know we don't want everybody to know where our officers are at for their own safety of course so this is being taken care of and uh, we we work hard on on implement things uh, exa an exhaustive policy uh, also uh, that our our officer went through and signed and. Uh, uh, we did a lot uh, working around making sure uh, um, we follow policies and, uh, and provincial standards also. Awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Francois, and thank you for sharing those, those reports with us. Uh, we're going to go back to the question here and, um, and have Wayne answer. So I'll just repeat the question here. So many public safety fleets aren't using telematics to manage their operations. In your experience as a first responder, what tools, information are these fleets missing out on? Thanks, Amanda. And uh, again, uh, you know, Francois sort of echoed uh, most everything I was going to cover because we're basically doing the same thing. Uh, but from my standpoint is, is that if you're not using this system or any system, you don't have control of your fleet. You're not going to know where your vehicles are to and, mm -hmm. uh, and their location and their response times. Uh, with this system, uh, with GeoTab, you can access your fleet anywhere, anytime. For people, like Francois said, that you want to have access to the system, whether it be owners, whether it be managers, round-call supervisors, you know, or and or our dispatchers. Uh, without this system or with this system, you can save your maintenance cost. You can keep your maintenance cost under control because you will see the abuse if there's abuse. And I'm not saying everybody uh, is abusing, but there needs to be full accountability. You know, uh, you don't know where uh, your vehicle or your employees and what they're doing. If you haven't got some way to monitor and we dispatch an ambulance that's got to go 45 minutes down the highway, when it leaves our shop, we will know because we can see it leave. What happens between then and there? When do you get back? We got no idea. What time do you get on scene? If there's an accident, any way to track it, anything to do, you know, uh, if an investigation results. Uh, the telematics is a huge asset uh, when it comes to accident investigation. And how good is it? And I know what it's like to have your own data. We got our own data. Someone's not going to come in and say, you did this and you did that. This person saw this. The system was here. This is what it says it done. And here it is. And I, if, if I hardly haven't said it before, I'll say it again, that this system has saved our butts so many times. I don't mean from major lawsuits, but, you know, when there's questions. You know, and it's down to the point now where when someone calls you with an investigation and complain about something, I can, on my computer, and in a matter of a few minutes, I can have all the data that I require. The other thing that, you know, we found and that we use it for, it helps with our payroll. Believe you me, it helps with our payroll. When you got, you know, a crew or a team that's called in on their day off and they're willing to do something and it's on the weekends and after hours and they're saying, well, I'm putting in for 10 hours extra time, which is fine. We got no problem in paying that. But the lady out in payroll can validate the time they got aboard their truck and they started it until the time they got back and they cleaned up their truck and they went home. So there is nothing that can be doctored. The time is the time it is. So like you say, something as simple as the payroll, you know, we'll know when they start the shift and when, they in, when they're uh, in their shift. We got better control with our maintenance program. You know, something as simple as the, the medic will call in and say, the engine light is on in my truck. Can you tell me what it means? What should I do? Should I feel safe? Should I didn't feel, do I not feel safe? And the technician, especially in our shop, can talk to the guy in the field live and say, yeah, the, yeah, the light is on is due because your gas cap is not on tight, as an example. That something like that can activate your engine light, which can, you know, the driver's going to say, well, something is going wrong, you know. So, again, to answer the question, what they're missing out on, 
they're missing out on a lot. That's it. Great. Perfect. Well, thanks so much, Wayne. Thanks for sharing. Um, so we'll jump into um, let me just navigate here. Um, so we'll we'll go to another poll. So our second poll here. Um, so if you can answer the following questions about your public safety fleet, and you can select all that apply. All right, let me just get to it. Uh, no, that's okay. All right, we'll just launch the second poll. And uh, we just have some general questions here for you. A lot of you who are Geotab users can likely answer these. Um, so the first one is, can you answer any of the following questions about your public safety fleet? Uh, who are your top five aggressive drivers? Are you automatically alerted when a vehicle is in a collision? What are your most underused assets or vehicles? How much did idling cost your department last quarter? What are your fleet's CO2 emissions? Which of your ICE vehicles should be transitioned to electric? So internal combustible. And I can't answer any of these questions. We'll just give it a couple more seconds because there's a lot to choose from. All right, we'll end it there. All right, so it looks like most people were able to identify, so 18 of you were able to identify your top five aggressive drivers, um, about 15. Are you automatically alerted when a vehicle is in a collision, which is um, a huge benefit uh, for database administrators. Uh, your most underutilized assets, 15 of you again, 15 of you again with your idling costs. Uh, what are your fleet CO2 emissions? So seven, um, again, this might not be super important to your fleet. Which of your ICE vehicles should be transitioned to electric vehicles? So this is an assessment report within Geotab, your EV uh, suitability assessment. And can't answer any of them. We had four people. So there we go. All right. So now we will, uh, you can go to the next slide, Amanda, if you want. All right. This is open Q&A time for our guest panelists. So if any of you have questions for Francois or Wayne, um, please submit them in the Q&A. Uh, we did have a, a couple questions earlier. Um, so I'll just review some of those out loud. Uh, we had one come in asking whether or not Geotab is considering um, adding additional fleet integrations such as HR software and driver files. So yes, Geotab has an open API solution. So if you have you know, HR software, uh, payroll, like Wayne mentioned, uh, driver abstracts, that's um, type of thing, you can integrate these solutions with Geotab so that you can have one uh, point of access for your drivers. And we also had one person ask, where a cell signal isn't present, is the data stored on the Geotab device until the vehicle device is back in cellular coverage, um, or is the data lost? So no, the data is not lost, and the data is recovered once you reconnect to uh, cellular. Okay, we have a couple people coming in the chat. All right, this is a question for you, Francois. Uh, from Matt with uh, Regina Police. Um, he's asking, how was your how were your officers' response to the introduction of Geotab into their regular operations? So, what was kind of the change management situation like? Well, I, Matthew, well, but that's the first question. That's the first question we had too when when we were implementing this system. Of course, it's a lot of data. It's a little a lot of information. Of course, it could bring a little bit of uh, and uncertainty to the officers. I think it's the way if you're implementing this, you, that you're communicating this to your officers. Like I said, we're all accountable, right? So of course we want we want to back them if there's uh, any complaint or a, any false complaint. But also they have to be aware that we have access to data if they're uh, aggressive drivers. But and 
and, or, or doing anything that they, they were not supposed to. But what we did is that we, our approach was uh, when we gave access to our platoon supervisors to their team data, that helped a lot because, like I say, it's not data we want to look in the, the officer's back. We want them to see the actual data and evaluate uh, if they need any improvement and, and to actually know if uh, situations are, uh, arise uh, that they would they would probably uh, be not in trouble, but we would have, need to investigate. So I think by the fact that they have access with their team or the supervisor, if they ask to see their data, is like mitigating a little bit that aspect. But of course, at the beginning, it's all how you bring it. Uh, but when you know things, you're aware. It's not like we didn't say anything and 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 behind their backs, say, hey, we have a complaint. You've been uh, speeding uh, this speed uh, at this time at this this specific place. They know, so they're accountable for their actions. And people are watching them. It's not worse than having a certain system uh, in car cameras. We have body cams. We're account accountable in uh, in any any parts of our job. This is one other tool. And most of the time, it will get them out of trouble instead of putting putting them in trouble. And that's what we wanted. Uh, and and uh, we had a few complaints where uh, we're saying, well, they did, there's a certain officer that was doing a stationary radar, and uh, they were speeding each time they were going to in, to intercept the car. And we we looked at the data, and, and our officer never went at the address. They were never there. So. Basically, the complaint just uh, just was filed, and that's it. Was closed, so uh, it helps a lot. It gives you more. But if they know, they can't complain about it. Basically, because we've been very, very transparent about it, and I think that's the way it's got to be bring up to the officers. But it can bring a certain uh, uncertainty for them. And I, I do understand. I come from. I was a patrol officer too, but I think if you see in a way, well, that's going to back me up, and I uh, I did what I had to do, and. I did not drive aggressively or I did my job as I was supposed to. Well, there shouldn't be any problem. All right. Thanks, Francois. Yeah, that's an important part with uh, first responder fleets is that change management aspect. And um, yeah, I think the most important thing with that is the transparency component where, you know, you communicate clearly why are the telematics be implemented. Yeah. All right, great. Uh, we had a couple other questions come in. Um, Brent asked us whether or not Geotab can integrate with AssetWorks. And yes, Geotab can in integrate with that software. Uh, we do have several clients who are using this integration today. So um, if that's something that's of interest to you, please reach out to us or to your CSM and we'd be happy to uh, uh, take care of that for you. All right, another question that we have. Uh, Geotab, where does Geotab uh, host their data? So we do have, um, it might have been mentioned in the uh, in the security slide, but um, Geotab, they are a Canadian-based company, and yes, they do have cloud hosting in Canada. All right, this could be another question for you, Francois, and I'm just noticing we have four minutes. Uh, if we add our undercover vehicles to the system, how does public, how public does that information become? If a request came in, would we be worried about how much information could be shared publicly? That's a very good question. I'm actually the one doing the request access to information for our uh, for our uh, organization in here. Uh, that's a good question that maybe uh, would be a more of a legal aspect uh, uh, matter to ask maybe a lawyer or something because where, when there's an information, of course, it, it can be accessed. Now, uh, when I speak with the New Brunswick request, of law, if there's if they're requesting something that could put uh, could jeopardize police investigation techniques, we do we, we do not divulge that. So uh, we have an article that's protecting us of uh, divulging any information in regards to police operations that could. Uh, jeopardize uh, uh, investigation techniques. That is actually one. So for undercover cars. So this uh, that's for New Brunswick, but I think all their the, the provincial add their own uh, um, requests or uh, privacy law if you want. But for us, uh, that's in a way that would be protected. But 
it would be good to have a legal uh, uh, be, have a legal aspect of it. Of course, that I cannot never be guaranteed, of course. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Francois. And again, depending on your GeoTab users, you may have several users within a single database. Um, you can create rules, access uh, levels for certain people. So if you have someone, you know, top down who has full access, you may want to reserve access points for other administrators. So you can regulate all of that uh, within GeoTab. All right, any further questions? We've got two minutes left. All right, just a reminder that there is a survey following the webinar. So if you have any further questions, please pose them there. That comes directly to me, uh, Julie. I'm the marketing manager with Northern BI. And um, yeah, I guess Amanda, if you wanna finish up. Sounds good. Well, I just wanted to um, take a few moments to thank both Francois and Wayne for joining us today. Um, appreciate your feedback um, in answering some of the questions from, from the participants. Um, so once we're here, just a quick reminder with the Public Sector Summit on the screen up here. Reminder for those of you who have not registered to register, for those who are interested, looking for information, to please reach out. Um, Otherwise, if there are any questions that we were not able to answer in time, if you want to send those along, um, that would be great. Um, and we'll be in touch for the Yeti winners um, and appreciate if you guys could take a few moments to fill up that survey that pops up on your screen once the webinar ends. Otherwise, thanks again and hope to hear from you guys soon. All right, thanks everybody. And uh, thanks Francois and Wayne. And if anybody has any uh, questions directly for Francois, um, he has um, made his contact information. He's given it to me. So if any of you out there have specific questions for him offline, please feel yeah. free to uh, reach out and um, he's happy to do that. So absolutely. I'm on LinkedIn too, if you want to get in. And he's on LinkedIn too. So yes. you can find him there.